Ladies and gentlemen, this is the YouTube channel vlog show of inspiration and realness. Also, this is the YouTube channel vlog show of positivity, personality, and fun. This is Eric Lima Shenanigans of 1977. And now the perpetrator of these shenanigans, Big Beefy E himself from his Big Beefy Man Cave in New Bedford, Massachusetts. Mr. Shenanigans himself and the two-time Chilling 3000 2022 End of the Year Awards winner, Eric M. Lima. Thank you very much, Mr. Announcer, sir. Well, hello there, everyone. Welcome to yet another episode of Eric Lima Shenanigans of 1977. How's it going, everybody? This is episode 615 of the show. Happy Friday to all of you wonderfully happy people out there. And if you're getting paid, it's Friday. What's going on, everybody? June the 2nd, 2023. That's why we are about 19 days away until... Summertime. We're getting summertime like weather, but we're going to cool down a little bit over the weekend. A little bit of rain in the forecast, but you know, sometimes the weather people are always wrong sometimes, so so we can wait on that. But it doesn't matter. I'm going I'm to let my hair grow out a little bit more. That way I can get it cut. So I want to get it cut nice, freshly cut for the summer so I can look good for the summer. I can look good for the Whale City Festival and the Portuguese Feast next month and the month after August. And uh, did I freeze there? I was frozen today. Here we go. Uh, so uh, really, really happy to be here. Hope you guys. And I've reached 150 subscribers. So I don't know who's uh, who the extra people subscribed to me. Thank you for subscribing to me. Thank you for tuning in to my show. It's, it's a good show so far. And it's been pretty good. So, hey, what's going on, everybody? So uh, we're going to talk about what happened last night on Impact Wrestling. By the way, the Red Sox finally won a game. Would you believe that? I'll talk a little bit more about that on an... I'll probably uh, cover the week uh, the weekend sports uh, for my big BVE's Boston Sports Beat. That'll be another episode coming really, really soon. So, uh, so hang in there, okay? Uh, Impact last night is the fallout from Under Siege. Uh, Bully Ray addressed the Impact crowd, and he says he took great pleasure in power bombing men through tables, women through tables, and Scott Demore through a table. And he says if you anger him a little bit more, he'll light the table on fire and put you through it. And I'll tell you one thing, Bully Ray's a grouch. He's been a grouchy boy lately. Uh, he's been a grouchy boy. Probably he's still upset that he's blowing the Yankees got beat by the Red Sox after the, uh, 2004 after being down three games or nothing. <laughs> Let it go, Bully Ray. Let it go. Okay. But then he says, the, um, go over the 841 challenge. Now, the 841 is this eight man tag team match that starts off. Then the winning team goes off in a fatal four way. I think, listen, then it. And then the one person that comes out of that becomes the winner and the number one contender for the uh, Impact World Heavyweight Championship. Steve Macklin comes out and interrupts Bully Ray. And Steve Macklin goes, I would love to, love to go face you one-on-one. -on -one. It would be a great match. But what if we can do this together to run things, right? Mostly machine guns interrupt Bully and Macklin. Said, hey, Alex Shelley is the number one contender for against all odds. Bully Ray, <laughs> surprisingly... Um, Shown, uh, shown uh, gave some props to Alex Shelley, but then you know Chris Sabin don't believe it. But he says, "How about this? How about we've got everything get, uh, settled against the odds? But what about tonight? You guys want to face this in a tag match?" Billy Ray Macklin says, "Uh, uh, no way, right?" Subculture comes out of all the teams and said, "Hey, they don't want to face you. We can. How about this? Subculture, motorcycle machine guns. Mark Andrews says he wants to face up uh, motorcycle machine guns." And then all of a sudden, Chris Sabin and Alex Shelley goes, yeah, we'll do that. Let's make it official. And that may, match was made official. So, uh, you know, Mark Andrews um, challenges, and Alex Shelley goes, why the heck not? Let's do it. Let's do it. Test us. So, huh, dream matchup will happen. Jimmy Jacobs interviewed Nick Aldis. Nick Aldis um, talked about the 8-4-1 matchup, and um, he ends up um, plans on being the winner. Well, you got a grumpy bully Ray. I think he has to team up with. So uh, Mick Aldis wants to put up with him. So that will be very interesting. Uh, first matchup, first my uh, matchup on the action card: Yuya Uramora faces Eddie Edwards, accompanied by his lovely wife Alicia Edwards, who is a fellow Massachusetts native. In fact, Alicia Edwards is a fellow New Bedford native, like myself. So props to her. I didn't have a picture with her long before she became an Impact Knockout. So, anyways. Edwards wins the matchup and goes and offers his hand, uh, handshake uh, of sportsmanship to Yuya Omara. As he goes over, Eddie Edwards is like, ah, psych. And then Frankie Kazarian comes out. 
confronts him about that, and then both men brawl. Alyssa jumps on the back of Kazarian. The Edwards got knocked down. Frank Kazarian walks out. And then uh, Simi Callahan and Jake Chris come back and against DK. They win the matchup. The design, they'll attack Kristen Callahan. Rich Swan, who was one of the members, one, one half, uh, one of the participants, I should say, of the 8-4-1 matchup. And so, so, Rich Swan was a little bit too late. Swan explains why he was late. Explains that. So you guys are going to need a partner. And then, Callahan, Sammy Callahan, look at D- Jake Chris says, it's time for the doctor to call the monster. And I think what monster, I know what monster he's going to call on, because somebody needs to be counter Big Con. And I think I've got a good feeling I know who it is. Sammy Callahan, if you're watching, I think Madman Fulton could be, could be just what the doctor ordered. And believe me, back, uh, Big Con, you got Madman Fulton to deal with. And that's the case, man. You're going down, design. Diener, Angels, and, and Con, was it Moe, Larry, and Curly, the three stooges? Hey, Molly, Larry, get the tools. What tools? The tools we've been using, last, using last, ah, the tools we've been using for the last ten years. All oh, those tools. Wait a minute. The man says the door goes on the right. What is that? A fist. Boom. Point to this right for this chump, will you? <laughs> I love the design art. The three stooges of impact. Big cons, Curly. Uh, uh, Angels is Larry, and Diener is Mo. <laughs> Ah, uh, your yeah, knobs got spread out. So, anyways, so uh, Trinity went one on one Savannah Evans, and Trinity made the big woman tap out with the starstruck, and then Trinity decided to call out Deanna Perazzo. Requests a matchup. Hey, how about you and me at Slammiversary for the Knockouts title? And then Perazzo goes, "Let's dance," and holding up the title. Trinity's looking at it. Then Savannah Evans and Joe Zell Shaw decided to blindside them, and then Jay Vidal grabbed the grabbed the purse and started whacking both ladies in the head with it. Well, I don't, well, it was loaded with something, and then Jordan Grace came in to um, make sure that you know, you know, to help out two ladies that she respects. And then, after three knee strikes, took out Jordan Grace. So, um, subculture, uh, subcultures. Uh, Danny Luna took on Jody Threat, and this was a heck of a matchup. This matchup could have gone either way, but Jody Threat did pick up the victory over Danny Luna. Danny Luna, next time, girl. Next time, I know you get it. Next time. And uh, Santino Morello was talking to Joe Hendry about how, you know, Dirty Dango did him in and all that. It's in, in, it's son of a gun. It's, you should get revenge. But I'm no longer an in-ring competitor, so to speak. But you know what? I'll let you know. And then when he was about to make the, uh, make a match, Kenny King and Sheldon Gene interrupts Hendry and Santino. And then Santino goes, you know what? You got me, got me making two matches. Next week, it'll be Sheldon Gene one-on-one with Joe Hendry. But then, it, and then he goes, just before I was rudely interrupted, It'll be you versus uh, Dirty Dango in a rematch for the Digital Media Championship against all odds. Joe Hendry goes, that's fine. Then Killer Kelly addressed the Masa Slamovich. Now, Killer Kelly's gorgeous. No, I love her. But she reminds me of my ex-crush. I don't even want to mention her name, but the fact of the matter is, Killer Kelly almost looks looks almost like exactly, almost like her. Almost like her. It's it's, it's really uncanny, but but Killer Kelly's a lot more, more gorgeous, a lot more gorgeous than my ex-crush. Get Never mind, just, just I'll speed it up. I'll speed it up. <laughs> Last thing I need is something going on there. Whoop! Okay. Uh, but so anyway, she's challenged uh, Master Simon Bitch to a dog collar match. After we see these ladies beat the crap out of each other, <laughs> and you know what? Not only Kelly Kelly's but beautiful, she's kind of sadistic. And um, the match is happening. A first ever knockout dog collar matchup. Believe me, unbelievable. And the main event. Uh, Morrissey and Machine Guns in, against Subculture in a tag team matchup, and I gotta tell you, I like Subculture. I'm a big, I was a big fan of these guys since they for, first formed together in NXT UK. I hope when NXT Europe opens up, uh, Subculture will go back. Uh, will go back to NXT Europe and really hit it up, um, hit up the tag team scene there, and uh, really showcase their skills. You know. Uh, all over the world. I mean, this is a huge opportunity. But we saw a lot. I was hoping that subculture would be the ones that would be coming down to NXT in the states because they they would they would have added a lot. But they went to Impact instead. But uh, wasn't a good night for subculture last night uh, as Motor City Machine Guns picked up the, picked up the victory to get a momentum. As you know, Shelly is challenging Macklin for the world title while Saban gets another shot at the X Division title against Trey Miguel. Heck of a matchup that was, and everything in between. Now, I got a question for you folks out there. Would you like to come, like me, for cover Ring of Honor one of these days? If, if you, if you want me to, let me know. 
Let me know in the comments if you want me to cover some Ring of Honor. Cause I'll start watching some Ring of Honor match, Ring of Honor shows as well because it is part of AEW. So, in a way, so I'd like to see that happen. You know, I like to uh, cover Ring of Honor, and uh, uh, I would like to. You know, that would be a great idea to add to, to already a great segment. So, if you want me to, uh, let me know. Uh, let me know in the comment section if you want to see me cover Ring of Honor. I'll be really, really cool. All right, then. That's all the time we have on the show. Episode 615 of Eric Lehman's Shenanigans of 1977. AEW. Oh, not AEW. Uh, Impact Wrestling. Here we go. Got all wrestling organizations on the, bra- on the brain here. Uh, Impact Wrestling. Uh, June Event Center for June 1st, 2023. Fallout from Under Siege. And... Against all odds, it's right, coming right after it. So, we're riding in there. So, we'll see what happens. So, that's it. Up up next, episode 616, is the game of strategy, luck, knowledge, and daring. Bullseye! That's right. Kind of spin the information against that rotten lightning. We'll see what happens there. All right, then. So, I will see you guys later. Till next episode comes rolling around, Mr. Announcer, please take us home. That is all for today's episode of the show. This is Mr. Lima speaking for Eric Lima Shenanigans of 1977. A big beefy E, do it for Bob Saget production. And in association with a sweet both of raving dingleberries, telepictures, and distribution. Thank you for watching another great episode of Eric Lima Shenanigans of 1977. Until the next episode, goodbye for now.